All right. Um, even though this is a Mustang channel, I did want to do another update because today is one week since I got the stint put in my heart for that 90% block. And I don't know if anybody out there in the in the world that is going to have this uh, procedure at some point or has questions about it, but I thought this might be a good chance to uh, kind of show what I've gone through over the past week. Um, so once again, last week, um, I had chest pains, went to the ED, uh, got triaged, immediately admitted, come to find out that I had a 90% block, and um, they uh, got me situated. They had a 90% block, and the plan was to put a stent in my heart, to open up the blockage, um, and make sure that everything was fine. And so, uh, a week ago today, I went and had that done at 10 o'clock in the morning. And the procedure was pretty straightforward. Um, they go in through my wrist, and they run a the catheterization goes up through the vein and through into the heart. Mm -hmm. And they look and they see if um, you know what the damage is, and then they put the stent in. So, how do I feel a week later? Uh, and I think I said this in the last video, the way you can think about having a heart stent put in is the fact that as soon as you get it done, uh, you feel amazing. It's not like a, a, another surgery where you have like a gallbladder or something removed where like you wake up and you feel very sore, you don't feel good, and there's a recovery period. Like when you get your heart fixed with a stent, it's almost like immediately you feel great because all of a sudden your body is getting all the blood that it hasn't been getting before. Um, so, you know, wake up feeling great. The only things that I'm experiencing right now, um, and I wore a tank top uh, so you could see, it's easier to see, is, you know, the bruising from the procedure. Um, it, it's pretty, it's pretty gnarly. goes, you know, from my elbow all the way up to my palm. Um, and it hurts. Uh, I don't have really any grip or strength in this right hand, which sucks because I'm right-handed. And I thank God I don't drive a manual. Um, I don't have a lot of strength in it. I'm not supposed to lift anything over five pounds for this for another week. Uh, I will say that one of the things that um, does kind of suck is when I sleep. Every once in a while, I get these deep, deep pains in my muscle. Um, it's pretty, pretty significant and uh, it kind of keeps me from being able to sleep. As long as I'm up and around, it doesn't bother me. Um, and then some pains in my wrist if I you know, accidentally use it too much. Um, I don't remember because I had this procedure done in 2012 and they actually went through my groin. Um, and I don't remember that being such a, a, a recovery period like this with this and it being so cumbersome. Um, but it's healing. It, it looks like hell, but um, that's it, you know. And that little procedure, a little stint, a tiny stint put in my heart saves my life. And it's just, it's just really incredible in how important you know, heart health is. And you know, they call it the silent killer because you just don't know. You, know, you, you feel great. Like I said previously, I, I was at the gym that morning, had a great workout, um, just eating breakfast, and I started feeling you know, some discomfort. And I do think that it is weird, like right now, after you get done with your procedure, um, in order for your body not to clot around the stent and create another blockage, you have to take an anticoagulant. Um, and I can't remember the name of mine now. It, used to, it was Plavix, now it's a new medication. But anyway, it's really interesting in this when if you don't take this med, you die. Plain and simple. Like, you know, I've, I've got blood pressure medicines, cholesterol medications, and whatever, but if I don't take this anticoagulant, I'll die. Everything will clot around that stent. And um, so it's just it's just weird, and it really puts things into perspective um, when you go through something like this. Uh, once again, I'm very glad I bought the automatic Mustang, not the manual, because I wouldn't be able to drive. And, you know, that was one of the first things I wanted to do was, was be able to drive. And actually, I put I put this is how good I feel. Uh, four, five, five days after my heart attack, I hopped in the car, and took a two-hour trip to the beach, and I'm fine. You know. um, so, so that's kind of the, the update on that. Um, I was awake the whole time through the procedure. 
and uh, so I, I actually watched it, which is kind of gnarly. Uh, kind of felt I felt them put the the uh, catheter up in my arm. That was a little weird. I was asking the doctor questions, and I mean, he was nice, and we were having a conversation while he's you know, putting stents in my heart. Just just a very surreal experience, but very thankful for um, that medical team and, and getting me back on my feet. So. That's kind of what's going on with that, and um, at some point, if I'll do it today or maybe later, um, I'm going to do a a rant about rev matching the automatic Mustang because I'm trying to figure out how to, to disable that. And apparently, you can, and it just really irritates me no end. But anyway, anybody has questions, please ask. Uh, I'm an open book; I don't mind answering. So. Um, all right, guys. Thanks.